Blog Talk Radio. Welcome and greetings, everyone. Thank you for uh, listening to Blog Talk Radio today, the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. Today we'll be having our special guest will be Chrism. He's a Shakti Pot guru, and he will show us how Kundalini devotion alone can aid and inspire a Kundalini awakening. Chrism is not a Swami or a Raja, saint, reverend, pastor, monk, priest, or any other exalted individual. He does not claim knowledge of the writings or activities of any ancient lineage or sacred text. The information he received is gifted by the expanded awareness of the Kundalini. He teaches and activates the Kundalini for those who clearly are ready. With over 18 years of experience, with a guidance to teach those, this for those who are guided to receive, he comes from a place of disciplined love and disciplined intention. So let's please uh, welcome Chrism to the show. Hi, Hakeem. Thank you for the welcome. Uh, hello, Chrism. How are you today? I am, I am well, thank you. And yourself? Doing very well, thank you. Very well. I have to say, uh, there, there, there seems to be a little bit of noise on, on your end there. Yes, um, it could quite possibly be uh, some interference from the, um, the uh, through the uh, the portal here, to the uh, the from Block Talk Radio. I'm not sure exactly what it is from the studio uh, link. Am I am I coming through okay with you? Hey, you're coming through quite clear. Okay. You are coming through. May, quite I, may clear. I begin, Hakeem? Yes, sir. Please let's get this down. So this this is a uh, everyone. Hello. Uh, this is a conversation about devotion within a Kundalini context. One of the strongest and most powerful aspects of a Kundalini awakening can occur through the auspices of devotion. Devotion is a form of refined love that is given into. And into a concept, and when you give it into the concept of the Kundalini, you become involved with the divine aspect of yourself, that which lies dormant at the base of the spine. And this part of yourself is is a divine aspect of who you are. So basically, when you come into devotion with regards to the Kundalini, you are coming into a form of exalted love for the divine aspect of who you are. Now, it 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 doesn't matter whether you say the word kundalini, although, you know, I would I would suggest that that you use the word kundalini, but you can use the word goddess or god or or inner divine or however however your lifestyle and your belief systems allow you to understand and and partake of, of these higher learnings. When you go into devotion, though, I must tell you that this is a very, very powerful platform of experience with regards to the Kundalini. Uh, Just as a quick reminder for for people who may not be familiar with Kundalini, Kundalini is a, a spark of the divine presence within each individual, the last three vertebra of the tailbone extending down to the bottoms of the feet. They would form, this forms the first red triangle, red being the color of the sacred feminine as it travels up the left side of the body. Uh, Kundalini itself is an amazing energy that will come up a person's spine, out the top of the head, and this is typically referred to in in the ancient Sanskrit text as the marriage of the sacred female and the and the sacred male. When these two forces unite at the top of the head, a kundalini flow has been established. Kundalini is a transformation of a normal physical person into that of a of a luminous being, a, a luminous uh, semi divine individual. And yeah, that's that's easy to say, but it's a lot easy to be. Uh, sure. it's, it's much harder to be than it is to say. Kundalini. So this, yes. This, this 
uh, illuminated person, are, are you going to now touch on exactly what that means? Because a lot of people hear things about, you know, light, enlightened, illuminated. So would you, um, when you when you get a moment, uh, expand on that as well? Some exactly of the mean? attributes of a Kundalini awakened person uh, would include enlightenment, uh, which which is, is the form of divine knowledge gifted to a person still in the body, and and many of the various uh, phenomena that are associated with Kundalini, such as telepathy, clairvoyance, clairaudience, uh, you know, all of the of the different special skills and traits that come with the Kundalini awakened person. Uh, but with the kundalini itself, it begins a transformation in the flesh body of the person, okay. in the emotional body of the person, in the mental body of the person, in the psychological body of the person, and in the spiritual body of the person. These qualities will go through transformation, sometimes simultaneously and sometimes individually. A person may go into automatic movements or may be able to see the auras of other people or communicate with uh, with uh, non corporeal consciousness uh, you know many many different phenomena is associated with the Kundalini uh, but when you come into this from a devotional standpoint, it can be very, very beautiful very beautiful, very positive, very uplifting, and very transmor transformative. Kundalini travels on the vector of love. It travels there the best. Okay. I will always recommend that people come into Kundalini with a very strong level of devotion and surrender to the devotion. I.e., you don't, you don't try to program uh, how kundalini receives your love you know you're, you're not praying oh oh goddess kundalini make me enlightened give me special skills or things of that exactly. nature you surrender to the will of the kundalini within you the kundalini within you is a conscious force it knows you it knows you better than you know you it knows your karma and for the most part you're not allowed to know your karma because as as the karma seeps into your life, you have to respond to karma from a level of neutrality so that you can um, most most uh, literally correct uh, any of the challenges that your karma gives you from a very neutral and innocent standpoint rather than a pre-programmed standpoint. Uh, with Kundalini, your karma comes to bear. Uh, the, uh, much of the karma, not all the karma, but much of the karma comes to bear upon you in your life. And so within the understandings of Kundalini, you must understand that, yes, you know, there may be some difficult periods. There may be some harsh, challenging lessons that a person needs to learn. But if you're in devotion during these, these challenging teachings, that the Kundalini can give to you, if you're in devotion to the Kundalini, those teachings become infused with, with love. And as it becomes infused with love, the ability of the individual to to partake of these challenges without going through, you know, severe levels of, of pain or a dark night of the soul or things of that level uh, are greatly enhanced. So you're we, able look, to overcome these challenges in ways that that other people, you know, standing next to you would just, you know, they won't be able to understand at all. You know, the levels of forgiveness that occur, the levels of tolerance that occur, the levels of gratefulness that occur, you know, are 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 of a divine nature. And a person who isn't of a divine nature is going to have a hard time understanding. Mm -hmm. the divine nature of, of divinity as it comes into the human mortal body. Well, this this makes a lot of sense that, you know, from uh, theoretically that if you have this enlightened state or somebody, because it's similar to being, you know, a certain practice, you practice anything, like you exercise more, you'll be more uh, able to handle physical stress. So by 
putting yourself into in, in line with being devoted by first aligning with with love. So through love and devotion, you're able to surmount some of these uh, karmic effects that may or may not be be negative in a more prepared or uh, do, do you, is, it, is it easier to go through when you have love and well, devotion? Well, if you want to look at this equation, if, if you love your work, then it ceases to remain work. Okay. It becomes the source of enjoyment. Right. And as you love and you give your devotion to the kundalini and all of the, the different changes and transformations and challenges that may come, you love it so much that you embrace it immediately. You embrace it in all of its aspects. And you learn from that embrace and you learn from that devotion. And and really, love is the way. It is the way to go. Put your anger aside. It's so not going to help you. How do you define put, put your you resentment love? aside? Put your revenge aside. How, how can you define love in, in a way? I mean, people hear the word love all the time, but you know, you're saying put away anger, put away resentment. Are those some of the steps towards being more loving? Yes, forgiveness so, is a form of forgiveness, love. Forgiveness, right? Forgiveness so, is a form of love. Gratitude and, and, is and a in form that, of love. In that, would that become the teaching itself? When when you become more devoted through love, do you is is there some kind of automatic teaching or kundalini rising that may happen because of no. this? No, 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 no. Just just for the act of of having a devotional uh, expression well, does not okay. guarantee a kundalini uh, awakening at all. Okay. But within an awakening context, if if a person has has you know even knows of the word kundalini and, and begins to think about the word and and the word keeps coming into their lexicon coming coming into their thoughts coming into their self expression their inner speak and their outer speak and the way they communicate with people and all of a sudden they decide oh my god I feel like I'm being called to this kundalini force saying what what should I do what I'm what I'm saying to those people is to come to Kundalini in a devotional way. Okay. Okay. And for those who aren't called, or, or you know, don't have it coming to them, in, you know, in a way of a of a, of a telepathic or a, or a super conscious uh, uh, invitation, for those who who just heard the word and want to do some more exploring about it, well, then do that. Do that. Explore it. It is a wonderful, wonderful. Uh, transformation, you know, from 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 the mundane to the semi divine. Semi means half divine, half divine, half human at the same time. Mm-hmm. The two that become one, and the one that becomes two. So uh, it's so, not this, the, this kundalini awakening is not for anybody. Then what you're saying is that some people have to be some people are are, are have to be clearly ready. They're called. To it, like well, we just no, I mean, everybody has kundalini at the base of their spine, at the base right, of their Right, it's field. there, but, but the awakening part is not always, uh, people right, aren't always right. ready for Certain it. Certain levels of refinement need to come into play. Or the person needs to hear about it and be willing to go into certain practices of refinement that will allow it to come forward. And yet everybody that has this occurred to them is going to meet their karma on the road uh, that they walk with the kundalini. So the kundalini path, ah, the, the, the trees along that path are part of that karma. I see. Everybody so that gets to meet problem. that karma. Now, for some, it's going to be harder than others because, you know, the mm-hmm. karma that has been accrued is, is, is more challenging than other people have. And so you really don't want to compare uh, one person's kundalini path with another person's kundalini path, although that's easy to do, as the degree of difficulty uh, will, you know, will will you know favor one outcome or another. But the scenario is this: is this in our world at this time? It's it's a very very opportune opportune time for people to look at their kundalini and decide if this is a, a 
that this is something they want to go into. A lot of people uh, who who read uh, uh, enlightened texts or practice in enlightened uh, methods of healing, enlightened methods of soul exploration, and you know, people who are searching for that 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 condition that really merges them with with their word for God. Well, Kundalini is that condition. Mm-hmm. It is the strongest energetic condition a person can have and still have a physical body at the same time. To go beyond Kundalini is to, is to, is to not have a physical body anymore. Okay. So... The kundalini then, of course, because it operates starting at the base of the spine, which is, we should know is our physical body, going beyond that means is, is that death? It just or it be more of, a, of an ascendancy factor. A transcendence to ascend, okay. An ascendancy mm-hmm. factor, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, but, but even, even the kundalini transformation itself has stages. Right. You know, some, you know, it has many, many different uh, rungs to the kundalini ladder. You don't go straight uh, into, you know, full qualities of the divine itself. At first, you must learn how to how to climb that ladder. You know those those uh, ladders you see at the fair where they're they're rope ladders and you pay a dollar or whatever and you have to try to to climb the rope ladder without falling off. Have you seen them? Right. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you got to learn your balance. You have to learn how to keep your balance. And devotion is the best teaching for learning how to keep your balance. Because remember, as I want to restate, devotion is comprised of forgiveness. It's comprised of, of gratitude. It's comprised of tolerance. It's comprised of strength. It's comprised of... of uh, of love, and I mean the positive qualities of love, the strong feelings of goodness and happiness and joy and bliss that we feel within the different expressions of love that we have. Devotion is all these things, and when you apply that to a kundalini context, you begin to understand the power of service to others, Mm. giving to other people without needing to be repaid. So you know, I want to uh, touch on something about that right now, the service to other and giving without um, being paid. I, I want to take a moment just to, first of all, gratitude. Thank you for uh, Ashanti Davy, who some of you might be listening, wondering why you haven't heard her yet. She's doing quite well. She just had a pressing matter that she has to attend to, so I just wanted to address that. Um, and, uh, and also, I'm very grateful to her for giving me the opportunity to host the show with you today, because I'm so Thank you very much, uh, you know, for being here and being such a good sport, even in the absence of Shani Dave. I know it was uh, quite sudden. And once again, she's doing well, but she's just uh, had a pressing matter she had to deal with. So. Well, I thank Shanti Davy for her invitation to do this show, and and, uh, and I hope that the the the, the matter that, that she's attending to is resolved, you know, in in a happy and positive and and, and productive. Uh, Outcome and it's a pleasure to speak with you again, Hakeem. And, and uh, the last time uh, I, I did a show with you was long ago, and so I yes, really appreciate <laughs> the, the opportunity to touch base with you. And I want to thank you on behalf of Shandi for for being such a good friend that you can cover great. this interview when she comes when 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 she is being challenged by a pressing uh, by pressing business. Yeah, and we're pretty sure it's okay. Um, another thing I want to do is, 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 is there, if someone wanted to contact you and they wanted to, to seek more guidance from you, where, how, where and how, websites, anything that they could find, information to get in touch with you? They can go to uh, Kundalini, that's spelled K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I, and then the word awakening, A-W-A-K-E-N-I-N-G, Systems, S Y S T E M S, the number one dot com. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and and there you have 
uh, a way to contact me, but you also have a way to uh, educate yourself on, on on the Kundalini and how it can express through you. Okay. So just once again, uh, the website, if anyone wants to find Susan, is Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, the number 1, dot com. And you can find more information about Kundalini, how to contact Prism, and also educate yourself about Kundalini and Prism. So I I did interrupt you um, while you were talking about gratitude and service to others without expecting anything in return. And I I couldn't agree more with the power of giving yourself in service to other people without expecting anything in return. The, the, The feeling that comes with that just giving to someone no, and, 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 and this goes stuff. beyond goes you know this these levels of kundalini teachings go beyond what the human conscious mind is able to formulate as a reference point at this time if they if they haven't done any research on it uh it's okay. very 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 strong very powerful and it, and it needs to be that way you know when you're turning half of a human being into into a divine being the qualities of karma, the qualities of conscious need to be such that the surrender that it takes, the devotion that it takes, the love that it takes, and the, the meeting of the karma, the balancing of the karma that it takes is is quite severe. It, it's amazing. Okay. But when you come into it with devotion, uh, the knowingness, of the process also flows into the individual. So they are not lost. The Kundalini will teach you. It teaches you through your dream life. It teaches you through your intuition. It teaches you through your hunches and, and through the, 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 the so-called uh, happenings during your day that you would call synchronistic but are really being uh, manipulated by the divine that surrounds you. When you come into the Kundalini consciousness, a whole wave of divine consciousness is always around you, always teaching you, always helping you along this path because it is known how difficult it can be for the human ego to step aside. When we fall into anger or we fall into retribution or we fall into rage or we fall into revenge, these qualities stop our progress to a large degree. And so this is why forgiveness is such an important part of the devotional Mm -hmm. path. Once you're able to not respond to a stimulus that would cause you to have anger or not respond Mm -hmm. to a stimulus that would cause you to have revenge or or things of that nature, once you go beyond those ego-based responses, well, then you come into the devotional range of response, which is of forgiveness, which is of... Uh, you know, not having, not not allowing that to bother you. Having a mindfulness of forgiveness, having a mindfulness of gratitude, having a mindfulness of generosity. Kundalini will in, inflict honesty and truth upon you. So, in that sense, you don't even have to try. You just, you just don't feel like lying anymore. Lying is no longer an option. And I'm not saying that very interesting. you know has lying as an option, but the Kundalini right. <laughs> certainly takes that out of the equation of your okay. life, how you live your life. You know, I I, I I find that very interesting because it um, it does really sound like a big transformation. You know, I've heard things from many other spiritual practices that say that once you take upon yourself the aspects of the divine, that it no longer is a challenge. Like for example, you don't have to. Um, I used to use a saying a lot from Bruce Lee that said, take what works for you and discard the rest. And a, a yoga teacher um, once told me, she's like, I don't even have to discard the rest. All I have to do is take what works. And so it's kind of you just focus on the love and the devotion and you don't have to be too concerned about, you know, not lying, for example, or not being angry and whatnot. But I have an a, a interesting uh, question about that. So what about things when you're going through this Kundalini awakening, what about things in your environment? What about negative images or violence or messages from books or you will have you will have experiences with negative energies, negative er- energies of a corporeal nature or you know that of being a, a you know people regular people in your environment. Uh, you will be challenged. 
the, the Kundalini doesn't just give you this knowledge and then, then, you know, accepts that you're going to use it in a positive way. Oh, no, you get tested. You get tested. Okay. And so in your life, you'll be tested with people who will just be angry for you at you for no reason. Mm-hmm. Or they'll or they'll 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 be angry about something that you do or say and they will go off in, in such a tremendous blow up of anger and, and rage and revenge that that it'll go off the charts and then and, oh well what what does the Kundalini person do now? See? You'll be you'll be tested through synchronicity of 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 events. Uh, you'll you'll you may have some some uh, difficult karma to go through, and so you'll be challenged with that karma. Lots of different ways the Kundalini uses to test a person who is approaching the Kundalini. You're not just, just because you have Kundalini at the base of your spine doesn't mean that you're ready to become an angel. Right. <laughs> you, have to, you have to show, you have to demonstrate to the divine consciousness that you are indeed following these lessons, that you're doing these 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 works, that you are forgiving, that you are in devotion, that you have love, that you have compassion, that you have uh, gratitude, tolerance, patience, diligence, discipline, all these things. So would like a Christian counterpart be like that, how I believe Jesus might have said, you know, faith without works is dead. There are plenty of, 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 of analogous uh, understandings within the Christian uh, world that, that comprise uh, refinement opportunities towards kundalini. Uh, in the Christian understandings or the mystical Christian understandings, uh, kundalini is referred to as the holy fire of Christ or the holy fire or God's breath of fire. I mean, all of these different things. Uh, St. Teresa of Avila had Kundalini. St. John of the Cross had Kundalini. St. Philip of Neri had Kundalini. Many, 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 many people within the Christian world experience Kundalini. Um, so, yeah, within the, within the Christian understandings, there are plenty of reference points. The Ten Commandments in the Bible are, are, are a way towards refinement. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you is a huge, huge teaching. That is a refinement teaching, and that is a teaching of refinement that that would allow a person to come into the Kundalini. That alone, you know. And then you add the forgiveness of Christ, you add the compassion of Christ. Okay, you you add the sense aspect of Christ. There are so many. Uh, you know references within the Christian world that that we don't have the time to go into it, but so are the references there in the Muslim world. So are the references there in the Hindu world. So are the references there in the shamanic world. So are the references there in the Buddhist understandings, the Eightfold Path. So are the references within the yoga and the Kundalini yoga and all the different yogas, the Bhakti yoga, the Ashtanga yoga, the Hot yoga, all of this stuff. Well, there are definitely a lot of places that have a lot of uh, analogs and references to um, the Kundalini, it would seem. Um, we have, uh, we're just about to get down to about a minute left of the live stream, although we will have some time after this if we need to continue. Um, I'd just like to once again remind everybody that if you'd like to get in touch with Chrism, learn more about Chrism or about Kundalini, you can go to his website, KundaliniAwakeningSystems1.com, which is K-U-N-D-A-L-I-N-I, that's for Kundalini Awakening, A-W-A-K-E-N-I-N-G-S, Systems, or uh, S-Y-S-T-E-M-S, one.com. I might have messed that up a little bit, but Kundalini Awakening Systems, one, the number one, dot com. So, uh, like I said, we just have a little bit under a minute left on the live stream, but we can continue a little bit more here. Well, for the live for the live um, uh, broadcast, I would just like to thank everybody for listening. I, I would encourage everyone to listen to Hakeem and Shandi Devi in the future. I would like to thank both of them for this interview, and I would like to encourage everyone who is thinking about exploring Kundalini or actually experiencing Kundalini right now to go into deep levels of devotion and surrender 
to this amazing divine force at the base of the spine. All right. We are now uh, in our overtime stream. Okay. So now we're uh, recording for our uh, backup and our archive. So that if anyone well, I would, listen to this. I would like to welcome everybody to this archived uh, interview about devotion and the Kundalini. And I'd like to thank Hakeem, and I'd like to thank Shanti Devi for uh, giving people the opportunity to learn more about the Kundalini at the base of their spine and and about the devotional aspect of interaction with that Kundalini at the base of their spine. As I mentioned in the live broadcast, uh, Kundalini will communicate to you, but it typically will not communicate to a person with the spoken word, although that does sometimes occur. Much of the communication will be through the symbol language, the language of symbol. I want people to be aware that they may be visited by big cats or lions or wolves or uh, spiders, serpents, uh, you name it. Any kind of a top of the food chain uh, predator or creature, eagles, uh, this can come to the person who is awakening to the Kundalini. And it, it's just a, it's, it's a symbol of how you are coming into the top of the pyramid with regards to spiritual development, the evolution of the soul. And as you practice the devotion and as you surrender to the Kundalini itself within you, so will you migrate further and further and further into this great evolution. Now, if you have a teacher, if you have a teacher that is teaching Kundalini, well, then that, that's great, and you can, you know, you will follow the teachings of that teacher. But know that the real teacher of Kundalini is the Kundalini itself. I can teach people Kundalini, but it comes from that Kundalini that is within me. And, you know, it can be it can be a harsh, harsh, harsh taskmaster, and it can be a beautiful, beautiful, blissful, joyful, ecstatic friend. Both is typically how it comes through. And so as we as we come into great, strong and and uh, undeniable levels of devotion, so are we able to accept the many, many different opportunities of refinement that the Kundalini will bring our way. So, you know, in, in essence, you know, the, the main thing here is to be able to to surrender to this rather than to try to fight or force it to come. You know, it, it seems like it's not, not necessarily passive, but it's something that you perhaps want to mindfully recognize and then allow to come into your experience. The, the scenario with Kundalini is if if you resist it, it just gets harder and harder and harder and harder, and it can begin to do actual damage to the physical and emotional and psychological aspects of the person. Well, what I'd like uh, especially to know is how can someone fear? Well, what are some of the signs that someone could recognize? Some more signs that someone could recognize that they're actually having this type of experience? Heat at the base of the spine the tailbone that will move of its own accord, uh, random temperatures throughout the body, a, a, a vibration along the spinal column, uh, seeing floating blue lights that come across the visual field, hearing the sound of, of crickets or, or honeybees or the swarm of insects, uh, seeing and experiencing serpents, spiders and some of the animal creatures I've mentioned in the dream life, um, heat in the palms of the hands, a, a pressure above and between the eyebrows as if an inside-out protuberance is occurring, um, spontaneous movements that a person has that are not induced by the will or the ego of the person, incredible levels of love and bliss and ecstasy that occur out of the blue for no reason, uh, many, many feelings of not belonging to the world, a feeling of, of just not believing, you know, almost like you belong to another planet, um, 
out of body experiences or astral projection. I feel like I belong to another planet all the time. <laughs> maybe maybe you're being given an invitation you just that you haven't accepted yet, Hakeem. Well, I, I would like to have that experience. I'm definitely going to go to your um, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website to learn a lot more about it because I know that Shandi actually had a Shakti put, and um, and I've heard lots of great things about it. And I would I would really like to, you know, understand more because a lot of the things that you're you've been uh, explaining, I've had a lot of similar experiences or understandings. Um, that seem like they could be similar, but I just sometimes I just kind of think that I mean I, I've had a lot of very interesting experiences all my life, so I've never really given them too much significance just because I thought you know uh, well they happen all the time for one, and so I just didn't think that it was you know that big of a deal something to really acknowledge you know for example astral projection lots of lucid dreaming. Um, Especially yeah, yeah, animals, like you are you know you're at a stage in, in your soul evolution where you could participate with the Kundalini. You know, and I wouldn't be surprised that if it, it was your Kundalini that even arranged for you to have to do this interview. Shanti's got it. Shanti has the Shakti pot. She was in bliss for months. Um you know, she's teaching uh she teaches Tantra. She's a Tantra teacher, she's an author of Tantrism. Uh uh you know, Shandi is, is is an extremely valuable resource to the Western communities of nations for her That's knowledge sure. and her experience with this, this tremendous force. And I encourage everybody to buy her book. I encourage everybody to, to, to listen to her blog talk radio broadcast. I encourage everybody to go to her website. And, Hakim, if you can name her website. Oh, yeah, by the way, she... Um her, the name of her book is uh, From Om to Orgasm, the Tantra Pl- Primer for Living in Bliss. And um, she just released recently the um, e-book version of that. And um, her website is mytantraweb.com. So you can go to my, M-Y, Tantra, T-A-N-T-R-A, web, W-E-B, dot com. Um, and you can find lots of her different, uh, more information about Shani Davy and her products and uh, books and things like that, you can find them there. Um, but yeah, you're definitely right. She is a great resource. She um, she definitely is, quite, is a lot more open to teachings about, um, for example, Kundalini um, than I am. One of the things I think perhaps maybe why I haven't um, had the full experience is because I'm a person who's, I, I have put up a lot of resistance, um, especially to being guided or led by anyone. I have, I, I've had a difficulty for it for a long time, just perhaps some, for many years when I was growing up, for some reason I've been very uh, very resisting to authority figures or teachers of all times, whether they were my parents, older brothers or sisters, or my school teachers, martial arts teachers. I've always been this rebel, solo, you know, do-it-myself Type of person, and sometimes I find that that's you know probably not the best thing to do all the time in all situations. Hey, I was I was the same way when I was growing up. I didn't want to take help from anybody, especially not an authority figure. So I totally get it. I get it. Uh, the Kundalini is like the ultimate authority figure, and and, and it will change your life against your will. Uh, and that is where the ego really struggles because, you know, the ego will say, well, I want to do this. And the Kundalini says, well, you're going to do something else instead. And, oh, my gosh, you know, you have to come into balance with this uh, with this this force that seems to be taking over your physical and mental and, and, and psychological body. So, you know, be prepared for that. Be prepared to surrender control of your of your physical body, your mental body, your psychological body, your emotional body, and your spiritual body. All aspects that make you a human being on this world uh, need to be surrendered to the Kundalini. Okay? And if you have a teacher, well, then that's great. You know, have a teacher that, uh, you know, you know, hopefully they'll have an authentic Kundalini expression coming through them. And, and if that's the case, then you can also surrender to the advice they give to you. But you always have choice. You always have the choice to say yes or no. The only place you don't have choice is with the actual energy of the Kundalini itself. If it says you do something, then you don't get to say no. 
<laughs> okay. Wow. Uh, you know, that definitely That's sounds like something very I mean, powerful, I mean, and that sounds very challenging. Imagine saying no to Archangel Michael, okay? <laughs> so Archangel Michael comes along and says, okay, Hakeem, I want you to step to the left, to the right, do the hokey pokey, turn yourself around, and you're going, I'm not going to do that. That's a child's dance. And Are you going to say no to Archangel Michael? Hey, you know, uh, <laughs> or are you, are you going to do the hokey pokey? <laughs> yeah, I might do the hokey pokey. Especially, especially if I actually did see the, uh, the Archangel Michael, I'd be like, hey, you know, it's been a long time coming. been wanting to see you for a long time. heard a lot about you. Um, but with yeah, the Archangel you know, Michael, you know, I just use that as an example of divinity, not because yeah, of we're course, going of course, I know. the Archangel. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And, and that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, it, it's a divine presence, a divine intelligence, a divine knowledge that you come into an experience with which you would basically almost have no choice but to open yourself and submit to a sky. Oh, and let's 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 go further along that theme because the divine doesn't really care about the human idea of what is socially acceptable or politically correct. Right. Uh it may not uh follow the moral uh compass of Western Victorian technological society. It may not do that. It's just like, oh, yeah, 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 but no, you're going to do it this way. And then, boom, then you're all of a sudden, then where's your devotion then? Where's your surrender then? When it doesn't comport in its activities upon you to those areas that you have expectation of, well, what happens to your surrender? What happens to your devotion then? You see, once again, the Kundalini will test you in all areas. Hmm. Are you still with us? I'm sorry? Oh, you know, it sounds like you dropped out just for a moment. Oh, no, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> just making sure. Um, so, the, the, you know, you mentioned this about being tested, you know, earlier. You said that a few times. And, um, and you know, I find that very interesting because, you know, it, it really does, interesting enough, it intuitively makes a lot of sense to me that especially your karmic, um, record, if, if you will, or the, the karmic the, the karmic residue that you have, that when you're going through such an experience, you're going to be presented with these things to go through when you're having your when you're experiencing the Kundalini awakening, and you can be taught by those things. Is, is there a possibility that someone um, might have a very rocky, um, you know, karmic experience to, that, that then comes up, and that perhaps they uh, won't learn from it. You know, people all the time ignore the learn, make mistakes in life, and then they don't take the learnings from that. You know, you know, people try to say that you know, with age comes wisdom, and I find that not to be true. That you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, yeah, can, a lot of people start off. Uh, people who are coming into this lifetime with a possibility of having the kundalini, they will typically come in and they will have very, very difficult karma early on in their life. Uh, a lot of people are, are abused as children in the many different ways that abuse can occur, everything from physical abuse to sexual abuse to emotional abuse or all of the different levels of abuse will come to a person early in childhood so that those areas of karma can be moved out of the way. Unfortunately, it also leaves areas of resentment and, and programming in place within the person that the Kundalini will have to dislodge or find a balance for. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. I, I get that. Yeah, and so as the person comes into the Kundalini with some of those programs of resentment or mm-hmm. or anger because of the early childhood karmic balancing, well, the Kundalini will give that person some tests and some and some exercises, uh, experiential based. That will allow that person to to come into a an understanding of what is going on. High level of forgiveness. Once again, I mean, this is all about helping people. This is all about giving service to other people. This is all about helping your fellow human being come into a greater exaltation of life. 
greater experience of life, a greater uh, enjoyment of happiness, and a greater strength to get through difficulties. We don't get kundalini because we want to fly around and, and say, see, I'm semi-divine. You know, that's not what it's about. It's about helping other people. It's about helping fellow humanity. It's about giving 